you know, um, I found the most success with it, I guess, even though I wouldn't even consider it a success yet. <laughs> Okay, so today's going to be kind of a shed uh, vlog video. I'm trying this new system out with my new like webcam and new computer setup and everything. Um, and we're going to talk about some things that I do when I practice. Uh, it's going to be like a shed talk kind of thing. And uh, this PDF book that I'm thinking about putting out this year. Um, I'm going to talk about some things like that, but anyway, it should be fun. So I've been working on this new uh, Chris Potter, I mean it's, it's new to me, this Chris Potter transcription and I thought it would be a good idea to kind of go through some of the things that I do when I'm transcribing something or w reading a transcription, like how I take it and try and incorporate it into my uh, playing directly. Obviously first is I like to play through it uh, at least a couple times until I can really play along with the recording. And you know, then I pick little phrases for myself that I like. Um, that I can consider myself to use and I guess a real setting or I hear really well or every time I pass the changes that it's going through I can hear you know through the chain uh, that line through through whatever changes of whatever tune this transcription is over uh, the bird tune which is just a, a C blues called relaxing at the Camarillo it's like his duo with Christian McBride uh, it was like live on a radio show or something and um, there's a couple lines in here that I want to talk about the first one See, the first one is this one. Right? So that is a pretty easy one to to put into someone's playing because it's four bars and it's the first four bars of a blues. So it's, you know, that's a great starter to a chorus, you know. Um, so what I do is I either put on IRLB or I'll play acapella and I'll play a chorus of blues, right? And then the next chorus that I start, I try and put that lick in and then keep going and kind of like just plug and play. So I'm trying to incorporate that lick and it, you know, now that you hear it, it sounds very like plug and paste or plug and play or whatever. And that's fine. That's not really the idea of the exercise yet. I'm just trying to get it under my fingers and understand it and what's happening. It's based off of that lick. <laughs> You know, that Charlie Parker like I think. But instead he takes it out. You know, so that's one. That's one line in this, and I'll put it up on the screen of something that I try and take from this solo, you know, besides the fact of, like of when you transcribe it or learn it, you know, learning the phrasing and all that stuff, but, you know, it's, it's another thing to take these lines and directly correlate it to your blowing, you know, so that's just one, that's at the beginning of a phrase, so, um, I'll take another one that I really like. One, two. <laughs> You know, that's a nice phrase. So then I try and play a blues, and I try and kind of incorporate these two into the same um, chorus, I guess. So I'll play one chorus of kind of my own thing, and then I'll play that first lick at the beginning, and then I'll try and incorporate some parts, if not the whole thing, of that second lick in the middle. <laughs> That's not right, you know, so 
I got off a little bit. So this is usually where I bring Iroh B into it. <laughs> to get back on but it just didn't work this is the trial and error part you know um, you know trying to find little filler phrases that will work in between these two that I'm trying to work into my playing um, so whether it's on the four chord um, the second of you know uh, you know I didn't really play the beginning part exactly right but I'm trying to fill, so at least the main meat part of the lick, which I like, is the... The part of the beginning, the... You know, and you can change the beginning part, you can change the ending parts. You know, I could take another lick, like... That, that's that's one way of doing it. So this is this is future Ryan as I'm editing this video, and it's kind of be a little bit confusing, I think, because in my head I'm kind of you know looking at the chord changes that are going along to, to this lick. So when I'm saying like I can start it differently or end it differently, I'm taking phrases that I've learned from those uh, chord changes that the lick's on. So this is that that lick that I was just working on the that one. That's uh, going to, it's like starting on the last bar of the four chords, my G7, right? Um, and so it's starting on the last two beats of the four chord, going back to the one and then the three, six to the two, five, one, right? So it's like the last, like seven and a half bars. And uh, this can be kind of confusing because I, I didn't really explain it right, but I'm taking parts of this lick and then trying to manipulate it to where I can use some of the other things that I already have under my fingers and make my own lick, is what I'm trying to say. It didn't really come out that way, so I just wanted to kind of clarify it. Anyway, back to the video. So this is the, this is the process, and I'll insert clips of me playing with Iroh B and stuff. I do this over blueses and rhythm changes the most because, you know, everybody has transcriptions and solos of blues and rhythm changes, and that's the easiest way to Put them in 12 keys, you know, just through this kind of format, or applying these to different tunes. I also do this for altissimo licks. Excuse me, and there's a couple of good ones in here. You know, so that's one that I'll try and incorporate. And I posted an Instagram video of me doing it where I took a, a and that's just a look that I knew for the first four bars and then just attach this to the end of it. And this is this is the way I basically transcribe. I write etudes for myself based on the solo that I've learned or am learning at the same time. I just find licks that I really dig. Um, and then I play over and over again um, until it really gets into my head. And then, you know, I try and make iterations of things, you know. There's a lot of, like, a lot of Brecker ones and a lot of Coltrane ones because they're so mathematical and systematic that they kind of connect into each other. So there's just one phrase. <laughs> just, just things I'm trying to think about in, in the tonality and just connecting these little phrases. Um, and that's kind of the main source of my practice besides scale patterns and, and, and other kinds of patterns. But that's really the big gist of it is, is uh, you know, the growing of language that I'm trying to do because I never feel like I have enough language. And so this is this is my way of doing it. And I, uh, 
am thinking about putting these etudes that I've written. Well, I don't write them down. I kind of do them mentally, but I'm going to maybe write them down and um, sell them at the Orlando Jazz Workshop. Just some etudes based on different people um, and solos that I've done. So let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you'd be interested in buying uh, or anything like that. And uh, let me know what else you want me to talk about. Peace. <laughs>